Welcome to Facts TV News, where everything is true. Man chopped to death in Little London. A man was chopped to death in Moreland Hill, Little London, in Westmoreland. The incident happened shortly after 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. A police source confirmed the incident with reporters. The identity of the deceased has not yet been confirmed. The deceased man is said to have chop wounds all over his body. Police who were on the scene were trying to prevent a mob from killing the accused. Man dies under bizarre circumstances in Westmoreland. The Westmoreland police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of a man whose body was found in a neighbor's water tank on Saturday morning. The dead man has been identified as 57-year-old Stedman Barnes, Galloway District in Bethelton, Westmoreland. According to reports, fire was seen coming from the house that Barnes occupied about 2 a.m. Residents indicated that they managed to extinguish the blaze which was confined to the room that Barnes occupied. They later discovered the body of the deceased in the tank. It was later in the day, about 11 a.m., when firefighters in a joint effort with residents and the police managed to retrieve Barnes' body from the tank. While there is uncertainty as to how Barnes ended up in the tank, speculation ran rift that he developed a fight after waking up and finding his clothes ablaze. He then seemingly ran to the concrete edifice to access the water. However, this theory has not been confirmed by the police. A brother of the deceased told reporters how they ended up finding Barnes. A room was on fire and he wasn't in there. And after we search for him, we find him up here so the distraught brother remarked. He explained that his brother lived alone and had not spoken to him the day before over the phone. He further explained that the family was trying to deal with the sad news. We're trying to cope because we never expect this, he added. He disclosed that he had a close relationship with his brother, who was a friend with everybody. A jovial afihim name he added about his brother Barnes. Gabriel King's mom given six days to allow police to access phone. The mother of murdered nine-year-old Gabriel King has six days maximum to give the police access to her mobile phone, but her lawyer says he intends to appeal the ruling. When the matter came up in the St. James Parish Court on Friday, senior parish judge Shasha Ashley ordered Aminalia Issa to give access to her iPhone 13 Pro Box for analysis. She also rejected a submission from her lawyer that his client should be present when her phone was being analyzed. It will be enough for Cameron to be present, the judge ruled. The attorney said he will now await further instructions from his client on how to proceed. Whether or not we get a fair hearing, the answer to this question is yes. Whether or not the variations adequate to protect the privacy rights of my client is really subject to my client's view of the matter, he told reporters outside the courthouse. He said, Yuna Issa is still mourning the loss of her son. My client wants the police to complete their investigation and find out who was responsible for her child's death. If the police wanted the information in the protection order, the cell site data, they should have gone to the telecommunications company and that is what they have sought to production order. So my client wants the police to conduct their investigations with all means necessary to bring an end to this matter and discover the culprit, stated Cameron. She is distraught, as we speak, as a result of losing her son. On January 13, King, who was artistic, was found with his throat slash, his body slumped on the back seat of his mother's car. She had reported to the police minutes earlier that her car was hijacked with the child inside. The shocking murder was why the condemned with the police being urged to bring the boy's killer to justice. Lawmen had steadily maintained that they had met upon roadblocks while working the case. Last week, commanding officer of the St. James Police Division, SSP Vernon Ellis, told reporters that since Young King's net, investigators have employed a range of technological, forensic and cyber strategies in attempting to make a breakthrough in the case. We have collected statements. We've even brought an expert in a motor vehicle to extract more model to the one Young King's was killed in on that day. Based on what was reported to us, the crime scene was enacted and several case conferences were conducted by the detectives SSP Ellis shared. However, he said the police attempts to further carry out this analysis of the chance murder were met with a roadblock with a lack of cooperation. Their efforts to gain access to a cell phone belonging to the mother of Young King was barred, he said. Earlier in this year, my detectives made an application for the production order pursuant in Section 21 of the Cyber Crimes Act for the mother of the deceased to give permission to have access to her cell phone. That cell phone has been in the custody of the police since January, when this murder took place, said Ellis. 
On the 6th of September 2022, the production order was granted by the parish judge, stating that within 48 hours of service order, the key and communication cell site and other data surrounding the phone are to be handed over for the purpose of criminal investigation into the murder of Carol King, the commanding officer added. Through our lawyers, she is now challenging the order made on September 6, Ellis said. The legal buckle over accessing the phone began on Monday, November 14 and continued on Friday when the judge amendment the order to access per provided by November 24. Senator Approves Income Tax Amendment Act The Senate on Thursday approved the Income Tax Amendment Act 2022 to ensure conformity with international obligations. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Kamina John Tussimit, who piloted the legislation in the Upper House, said the bill is a component to the recent past Special Economic Zone Amendment Act. Both pieces of legislation work together to ensure conformity with international standards of tax transparency as well as improving efficiency in the administration of the regime, she informed. John Tussimit, who is also a leader of government business in the Senate, said the policy objective, as driven by the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, has always been to increase the economy's productivity capacity. She noted that the incentives provided within the special economic zones are designed to facilitate their contribution to nation building. The incentives are found around multiple pieces of tax legislation, including the Income Tax Act, but it came to the government's attention that there were instances in which the policy was not clear or clearly articulated, she pointed out. John Simit said consequence, on further international reviews, it was determined that amendments were needed for clarity in order for the CES to be compliant with our international obligations. Those amendments were recently undertaken, and these amendments now ensure that the Income Tax Act is currently implemented together with the body of legislation, she added. She stressed that the government is ensuring that it improves the administration of the regime by addressing the ambiguities that they have noted. One of the primary incentives provided from the Income Tax Act is the Employment Tax Credit ECC, which provides business owners the ability to claim credit against income tax payable for their contributions to their employee statutory deduction. But the set of legislation have provisions which prohibits entities to economic zones for claiming the benefit. That was addressed and now the amendment to the Income Tax Act will provide further clarity by widening the scope of the ETC to include businesses under the CESAR, so they worked in a cycle ensuring that they're supporting each other, she explained. The government senate pointed out that clauses 2 and 3 allow for the insertion of the word business with respect to the application of the employment tax credit and the treatment of dividends in section 32A and 38 respectively. This ensures that the entities that offer business process outsourcing can operate in the zones and receive benefits contemplated by the CESA and the Income Tax Act which they are taken together, she informed. The gun amnesty to end tonight. The gun amnesty comes to an end tomorrow, Saturday, the 19th of November at midnight. I am appealing to all Jamaicans, anyone who is in possession of an illegal unregistered firearm or ammunition to turn them in. I should indicate to Jamaica that upon the expiration of the gun amnesty, there will be no extension. I urge all Jamaicans, anyone in possession of an illegal firearm or ammunition to utilize the remaining just over 24 hours to turn them in. The security forces will now intensify search operations for guns and the gunmen that possess them. While it is good to take illegal guns off the street, the greater impact on the homicide rate is if the shooters are also caught and arrested. Already, there have been several persons arrested for illegal possession of firearms under the new Firearm Act, including a teenager. They will face a minimum of 15 years behind bars and possible life in prison. I'm making a solemn and urgent appeal to our young men in particular. Please, I urge you, 
even at this late stage, turn in the guns. Illegal possession, use, trafficking, or storing of an illegal firearm will effectively end your useful life when you are caught. But it will save the lives of hundreds of innocent and productive Jamaicans. One thing I said, though. Please, I urge you, as your father, as your big brother, turn them in. You have 24 hours left, just over 24 hours left to do so. You have been warned. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, 